the way I like to approach going into a studio and, and I find this very exciting is, is just going in with the, with the songs and and waiting what's going to happen you know I, I, I think the songs have kind of a very interesting way of showing you what they need you to, to do with them and if you're just willing to, to be open to, to just opening yourself up to, to the experience of, of just being in a studio with, with, with a good engineer and with, with surrounded with musicians that you, you, you trust um, then there's something very magical that happens in the, in the combination of the music and the musicians and, and, and just even through just being in the space of where you go in with the purpose of being creative. And so for me it was a very pleasant experience and I'm really happy with what we ended up with. You've got to mark your, your successes. You've got to mark them, whether it's whether it's opening a bottle of champagne or going on holidays or, or going for dinner with your parents or whatever it ends up being. You've got to mark your successes because if you don't, the day your ship comes in might just be another day at the office. You might just miss it. And suddenly all your dreams have come true and everything just seems to go click and your life's good, but you're too busy to actually get it. And I'm not saying that happened to us, but for us, we were just running with something. It once kind of came out of the blue. It was like this little film we made with our mate. It got taken seriously, and we were like, oh my God, we got to follow this. This is, you know, this is great because our little film. And we followed it, and we, and, and, and we did, and we were so grateful for what it brought to the music because we're musicians, not, not actors. So we were doing gigs, and people were coming, and it was wonderful. And all the time, the film was gaining momentum. So, because, you know, getting to Sundance was like the biggest possible deal that could happen to our film and then getting and then for it to then be nominated for an Oscar so then when all of that happened we then ended up chasing you know getting involved in the in the madness of running up to that because we got nominated and it was like oh my god and we came out and we played more gigs and we did more interviews and we and we worked and worked you know because what else were we gonna do you know it was amazing uh, and then when it was over we got we got actually more busy you know, because it, because it's that classic working class thing of like, you know, you want me to come do a gig? Yeah, of course. You know, and you're just taking every offer that comes in the door because, you know, you're just you're thinking to yourself, make hay while the sun shines. This is great. You know, let's keep going, keep going. And it wasn't actually until about two or three months ago that I took a holiday. You know, and I was I was making tables. I was doing carpentry at home in Ireland, and I was cutting wood one day, like third day into my break. I was I didn't go near my guitar for a whole month. I was so happy cutting wood one day and I just had this overwhelming sense of goodwill just fell on me you know the Native Americans say you know when when you when you get on an airplane when you reach your destination sit for a while and let your soul catch up because humans aren't meant to travel that fast and when I think about the, the craziness of the life we had been living when I start cutting that wood and turned off and wasn't thinking about it anymore I got this overwhelming sense of goodwill and I realized my soul had just caught up. And suddenly all this greatness, all the, 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 the beauty and the wonder of what happened to us, in fact, suddenly sunk in. My relationship with Mara, her coming into my life has been very important to me in that she never asked for any of this. Like, she never, she, you know, she plays music, but I pulled her into coming on tour. And I pulled her into the film because John was looking for someone I recommended her. And so for me, when the success came eventually, I was so grateful because I'd been struggling for so long to have things happen and to have my band have make some, you know, to make some waves and wanting to just to be just wanting to be among the people who are doing it in the world, who are actually touring and, you know, living their life, the dream or whatever it is, you know. Whereas Mar didn't ask for it and it just sort of happened. And it made me realise the very important thing is that the, you know, in that the, in that the muse or success or the whatever that whatever that elusive golden thing is that we all you know struggle for is very shy, and the more you the more you blatantly chase it, the further away it's just always going to be, you know. And my whole thing was like, work hard, it's all going to work out, it's going to be cool. Do gigs, you know, if, as long as you can play well, people are going to get that, and then it's going to hopefully translate. Whereas Mar walked into the situation going, you know, wow, this is nice, you know, this is cool. And the bird went and landed on her shoulder. That fortune, whatever that fortune is, just boom. And because I was standing beside her, of course, I get the light too. So I'm, I'm, I'm going, wow, what is this? And actually, you know, I put a lot of it down to Mar's 
groundedness, you know. There's a huge element of magic in the last few years of, of my life and, and, and Mara's life. And I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that she is just, you know, made of the magic stuff or is, is, is you know, somehow a channel or, or is open to it, you know. It was the Oscar night for me because uh, I remember being a, a child and um, my mother used to always watch the, the Oscars, you know, every year because she's, she's a huge film fan and she, she would always um, watch, watch arty films as well as, you know, Hollywood films, whatever there was to, 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 to watch. And, and every year she'd sit down with the Oscars and just, just watch it. And, and I have clear memories of that. And so I think <clears throat> for me, when we were then, when we knew that we were going to, to be at the Oscars, it was really important for, for me and for Glenn to get both our families over for them to share that with us because it was by far the, 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 the biggest you know night of our lives I guess and and who else to share it with than our families and I and I almost I, I approached it through my mother's eyes you know I saw it through her eyes and in, in, in how just surreal that was to, to watch it all all these years and then to be actually sitting in, in the room um, it's just it was very surreal and and very dreamlike and it, it's still in that realm for me I, I don't think it will ever not be that you know, it's something that when I think about it, it's so, so almost like it was a dream, and it, it happened in another life or something. And uh, surreal in a gr in a great way, you know. It was it was an amazing night for for, for me and Glenn and both our families. <laughs> <laughs>